So golden vials, golden bowls, somebody say full of praise. You might have the bowl in heaven, the Super Bowl of heaven, you might have it filled with your prayers, but until you have it running over with praise, there's no answers coming back. Somebody say praise. This is Revelation 5 and 8. The vials that were there were full of odors, which are the prayer of the saints. The prayers of the saints were a sweet smelling smell to God. Why? It perfumed, amen, where God was. Not because it was prayer alone. It was prayer joined with praise. The Bible said in the word of the Lord, I love the scripture in James, amen, chapter 5. The Bible said in the word of the Lord, he said, we will let our request be known with thanksgiving. That the peace of God that surpasseth all understanding uh, keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, the, that's not James, but Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Somebody shout when I pray. pray. With praise. Pray. Hallelujah. Peace, peace will take the place of confusion. Come on, somebody. I may not know how in the world I'm going to get out of this one, but when I pray and ask God to do something, hallelujah, and I start praising Him that it's done before it ever happens, God said the first benefit that comes with a Amen. With praise, God said it brings forth a peace that will surpass your understanding. You ever experienced peace that didn't make no sense? It's the product of praying with your praise. In James chapter 5, the Bible said in verse 18 that Elias or Elijah was a like man with such passions as we were. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it rained not upon the earth by the space of th uh, uh, three years and six months. And then he prayed again. Somebody say he continued to pray. He prayed Amen. And God sent forth the rain and the earth brought forth fruit. So Elijah was a man just like we were. Amen. He'd go through the same things we did. But the Bible said he prayed earnestly. Somebody say he prayed earnestly. Prayed earnestly don't mean he just prayed continually. It means there was an attitude of gratitude. Amen. Coupled to his praying. When you look at the word earnest in James 5.18, it means to worship. So he prayed with worship. Somebody say that. He prayed with worship. Glory to God. As he worshiped and prayed. As he prayed and he worshiped. Hallelujah. God said, I'll change the climates. God said, I'll change the seasons. Because that's what God was doing. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout when I pray and I praise. It'll change my season. It'll turn the climates. It'll change the direction of the earth. Amen. It'll change the direction of my feet. Say so, praise him on credit. 
is a done deal praise. I ain't praising him because it's manifested and I can touch it and I can see it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If I've done experienced it in the flesh, I, I praise him. Come on, because John 19 and 30 said it's finished. I, I praise him because everything he done said he was going to do, he's already did. Somebody shout, it's a done deal thing. Come on, somebody. It done did. It, hallelujah. Before I can ask, he said, I'll answer Matthew 6 and verses 8. Somebody shout, it's done. I'm not, uh, maybe, well, Brother Marvin, it's not manifesting. I can't touch it. I can't see it. I can't. I can't feel it. Hallelujah! That don't mean it ain't done. It's already done in Him. I'm just waiting on His name before His saints. I'm waiting for what is done to manifest in the right season and time of my life in the earth. Somebody shout, in "Heaven is done." By stripes he were healed, First Peter two twenty four. It's not about receiving healing. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, "You need to receive the healed." The healed revelation, healed, healed. Everything's done that you need him to do. Now, I know that don't make no sense to the to the natural mind, but we're talking about a Super Bowl. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Heaven Super Bowl. It's a prayer bowl where the prayers uh, and the praise of the saints are mixed together. Amen. Glory to God. And God says when you join your praise, when you're praying, it's an expression of faith that you believe me that what I've already done, I'm about to manifest and let you experience in the earth. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? David said, I'm praising you because it's done. And then he turned right around in Psalms 52 and 9 and said, I'm going to wait on you. And that don't make no sense to the carnal mind how you pray somebody saying it's done and then turn right around in the same sentence and say, I'm going to wait on you. Well, I thought he was praising God because it was done. Now he's talking about waiting on God to do it. No, he was praising God that what he was asking God to do had already been done. Come on. It was already finished in the heavens. He was just waiting on it to manifest in the earth. Somebody ought to read it to neighbor. Say, can you see that prayer bowl? Can you see your answers are right there in heaven? Can you see that your miracle, amen, glory to God, is getting ready to be deployed from heaven? Amen, with the hand of an angel. Do you realize angels are lining up right now to the prayer bowl? That's why I've come to encourage you today. Don't you stop praying. Got a Super Bowl. According to Revelation 5 and 8, it's a golden bowl filled with the odors of the prayer of the saints. With the perfume, praise, and prayer of the saints. Somebody shout, I got a feeling. The prayer bowl is getting filled and getting ready to spill over. I got a feeling there's about to be a spill. It's too little for them. Running across gold lines. People spending all kind of money going crazy. Some of them will get drunk tonight and some of them will see eternity tonight because they'll get in some accident. Come on, lose their life. All for the sake of a worldly Super Bowl. Come on, but there's a heavenly Super Bowl. And God told me on this day, I want you to come preach and encourage my saints to keep praying and give them a revelation of their prayers in heaven. Show them that bowl, Marvin. Show them that bowl that's full of my super that'll mix up with their natural. If they'll keep in their natural here on earth uh, with my super that's in heaven. Uh, after a while, that bowl's gonna get full. Go prophesy to them uh, and tell them for some of them uh, the bowl's getting ready to spill. Uh, answers are getting ready to come back down. Somebody shout, there's about to be an earth touchdown from heaven. I'm telling you what, uh, hallelujah, there's something about to take place. Look at your neighbor say, I feel a comeback taking place. I don't read to you from
from the book of Revelation also, chapter 8, so we can get the full scope of what's going on. Revelation 8, verse 4. He's still talking about this prayer bowl, this super bowl. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't have super time unless you first have supper time. Remember Revelation 3, 20, said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, his voice is what's knocking, not his face. If any man hear my voice, I will open the door and come in and sup with him and he with me. Yeah. Revelation 3, 20, somebody say sup. Sup, sup. sup is abbreviated for supper. He that will have supper with me and me with him. That's what he's knocking for. Somebody shout supper time. In John 12, verses 2, they have made supper for Jesus. He sits down at the table, and Martha is serving like she always is, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Now, Lazarus sitting at the table with him, think about this. Lazarus had just been raised from the dead from a four-day-old stinking tomb by Jesus. And now here, Lazarus, the dead man who's alive again, is sitting at a table with Jesus. Jesus said in John 21 and 12, when he told his disciples after being raised from the dead himself, he said, come and dine. He didn't say just come and eat, just come get your blessing, just come and eat you something. No, my friend, he said come and dine. When you dine your wife, sir, you don't take her to Burger King. Come on, you don't take her to McDonald's. You take her down to a restaurant, glory to God. Hey, man, where you have to pull she money out? She didn't know you had it. You have to make your orders in dim light, and you're looking for a flashlight or spotlight, but they don't want you to read too clearly because they don't want you to see how much you're going to pay for how little a portion of food you're going to eat. But it's a dining place. It, it ain't just an eating place. So I'm sure there's a difference in a dining place and an eating place. You can eat anywhere, but when you dine, hey man, your spouse, you don't take them like I say to just an eating place. You take them to a dining room, a dining place. Come on, son. You get them dressed up. Hey man, glory to God. You sit in dim low lights. And you pull money out and you about freak out when you have to pay for the little portion. Hey man, it's on you only got to eat. You thought you was buying plates in China for as much as you pay because there wasn't enough of food there. Hey man, go to all God. Anybody know what? I did that before and had to stop by the fast food restaurant before I get home and finish filling up. <laughs> you know them places where they don't ask you for a tip, they got it already figured in credit to you. I thought I'd purchased the place where I was sitting one time when they said but to dine something when Jesus was saying come and dine when Jesus was amen calling them to come and dine or come sit at the table with me he was asking them to come have supper in other words when you're eating with your spouse somewhere like that it ain't about the food you're eating or about how much it's going to cost it's about the person you're in love with that's sitting at the other side of the table so when Jesus was saying, I want you to suck with me, I want you to die with me, he was saying, I want you to be intimate with me. I don't want you to just come to me and pray, flop down at my table, and say, oh God, I need this, fill me up, hurry, see you later. And that's what a lot of people do. They run to his table, they scream out, Jesus, I need a miracle. Amen. And they get up, thank you for sending it, and they put the chair back in his table, and they run on. Come on, son. And that's where we find Lazarus in John 12, 2. Somebody shout, that's where the miracles are. Lazarus represents the miracles. He, he, he represents and reveals the resurrection power of Christ. And where was he at? Somebody shout, sitting at the table at supper time with Jesus. Somebody shout, super time is always connected to supper time. You want to see God super? You got to give him your supper time. Amen. Supper is dying. It's coming to intimately be involved with him. Not just coming to his table and say, do this for me and get up and leave. No, Lazarus, that miracle is sitting there waiting on you to come sit on the table. Let me give it to you this way. Psalms 23 and verse 5, God said, I prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Amen. Somebody say, he set a table before me. And in the presence of my enemies, he'll know my head Lord and my cup will overrun. Where's the cup? Somebody shout on the table. 
So God said this table is a place of intimacy with me. It's a place of supper time with me. It's a place of dining with me. He said, I've prepared it before you. In other words, always remember the table's before you. Somebody shot us always before you. You may have sat at the table yesterday, but the table's always before you. You may have been intimate with me yesterday, but you need to be intimate with me tomorrow. Somebody shot the table's always before me. God's always saying, seek me. He's always saying, spend time with me. I don't care how much you grow the Lord. He's always putting the table before you. And God says, when you step into the presence of enemies uh, and you've been in my table, you've dined with me, you've had supper with me. He said, I'll note your head, but oh, I'll give you wisdom over your enemies. Uh, I'll give you authority. That's what the head's talking about. I'll give you power and authority over these enemies. And God said, your cup will overrun. In uh, other words, your gift uh, will flow. Uh, I'll fill your cup with answers. Uh, I'll fill your cup with provision. I'll fill your cup with power. I'll fill your cup with anointing. Uh, I'll fill your cup with strength. Uh, I'll fill your cup with might. Uh, I feel your cup with salvation. I feel your cup.